Okay. Right. Welcome back to chapter 5. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Vallava Girivaradha Gopi Jana Vallava Yashodanandana Vrajajana Ranjana Yashodanandana Vrajajana Ranjana Yashodanandana Vrajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tiravana Chari Yamuna Tiravana Chari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama, Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Okay, we are in chapter 5, and here are the sections. We are in first section, we read up to verse 1 and 2. It's about Nishkama Karma, how Nishkama Karma is equal to but easier than renouncing the world. So, sannyasa versus yoga. And we are in first section, 5.1 to 6. We have read up to first two verses. So, Arjuna is asking a question. Krishna is just replying it. Krishna is telling devotional work is superior to renunciation of work and that one who is, who is detached from the results, karma falatyaga, is the one who is truly renounced. So one has to work but renounce the fruit, that's what he's saying. And the, the subsection 4 to 6 is about although the results of renunciation and devotional service are ultimately purpose is same. But devotional service is superior. Why it is superior? Because devotees can quickly achieve Krishna. That's what Lord Krishna says in verse 6. Achirena adhigachati. Quickly achieve. Okay. So, we'll uh, read from verse 3. Lord Krishna says, one who neither hates nor desires the fruit of his activities is known to be always renounced. Such a person, free of all dualities, easily overcomes material bondage and is completely liberated. So, one has to work and detached from the fruit, not attached to the fruits. It's called Nitya Sanyasi. Nitya Sanyasi. Always a Sanyasi. Who is not attached to the fruits of activities. So then that is that person is eligible for liberation. So Srila Prabhupada talks in his lecture in 1966, early days of his gone, when he started single-handedly in New York City 
we were discussing last time for pro pass disappearance day so he started in 26 second avenue and that's where he he was giving gita classes and uh, can someone read yeah, a person who has renounced everything from the service of lord is called sanyasi Sany sanyasi means san nyas sat nyasi sat means the supreme eternal and nyasi means renounced so a san nyasi is someone who has renounced everything for the sake of the lord yes thank you so much bro so renouncing not just for fun but as a service to krishna it is not just that oh okay, you know i do this and i i trash it it's not like that but it is offering everything to krishna renounce for sat for krishna and in verse 4 lord krishna says only the ignorant speak of devotional service as being different from the analytical study of material world those who are actually learned say that he who applies himself well to one of these paths achieves the results of both so one process is like a slow and and hard more distraction in analytical way sankhya yoga whereas the nishkama karma yoga sri prabhupad translated devotional service here is easier but krishna says i mean both of them are same in the ultimate sense that the example given is by sri prabhupad in the purport is that the process of sankhya is searching the root they have not found the root they are searching who is cause of all causes who is in the root of everything they analyze every every item in the in the world and then they try to go to the the origin from where everything came so this basically research going on sankhya process of sankhya but whereas in ishkama karma yoga they have found krishna it's not that they have done research but they have got the information from the sattvic succession as we learned from chapter 4 they have got this knowledge from guru who have himself self realized who is well versed in science of krishna and he is trained in sattvic succession so we have to approach with submission surrender and service then we get our relationship with krishna and work for krishna so working for krishna means you are already watering the root whereas the sankhya process is searching the root where the root is so ishkama karma yoga or devotional service or ultimately bhakti yoga is is far superior shila prabhupad uh, disciple uh, burijan prabhu has uh, written a a book further explanation on sri popa's commentary and in his book he writes that if someone has to hold a uh, if someone is holding a rock then first you have to throw that's the renunciation and someone is like holding the x is like uh, holding another object so you can do if you want to hold the the x then you have to throw the rock then you can hold the x so basically if you want to so krishna you have to throw your material stuff then you are serving krishna there may be some questions we can discuss this but we have discussed this in the in the in the third chapter also about karma yoga it's not about like throw, throwing off your family and your job and all but basically doing everything in service to krishna um learning how to use everything in service of krishna and that training is required is called yukta vairagya but the the process of yukta vairagya we may usually go to we may say that we are serving krishna but we may start enjoying the fruit by ourselves so that training is required under a a spiritual master 
So Lord Krishna repeats emphasizes in last uh, verse in verse four he says one who does not know but he says one who knows. So basically emphasizing in both ways. If you don't know, you are ignorant. If you know this, you you really know as the things they are. So in this verse he says one who knows that the position reached by means of analytical study, Sankhya Yoga, can also be attained by devotional service, Karma Yoga, and who therefore sees both of them, analytical study and devotional service to be on the same level, sees things as they are. So you can see here uh, the process of analytical study on the left side picture, the scriptures, Jnana Yoga, the right side is the Bhakti Yoga already engaged in glorifying Krishna on the right side. So that's more tangible. Um, devotees are involved in cooking for Krishna, distributing Krishna's books, glorifying Krishna, worshiping Krishna. So practical activities. And the last verse for this section, Lord Krishna says, merely renouncing all activities yet not engaging in the devotional service. So this is what you, you just throw the activities and you don't do anything. That's what Arjuna wanted to run away from the battlefield. And he says, yeah, I am in a process. I'm a jnani, so I don't have to do anything. That's what he was thinking. But Krishna is saying that if you simply renounce all activities and not engage in the devotional service of the Lord, then you cannot make one happy. But a thoughtful person engaged in devotional service can achieve the supreme without delay. So you can see Srila Prabhupada was engaging his disciples in all the activities, uh, holding big festivals like Rath Yatra, distributing prasadam for thousands and thousands of people. And all of that requires practical activities. So it's not just the, the renouncing activities, but performing activities in service of Krishna. That will make us happy. And then we are eligible for achieving the Supreme. That means liberation. So the process of Jnana it's just renouncing. There is no connection to Krishna, so it's a very difficult process. And one may, one may be just on his own mind because there is no support from Krishna. So one may try to meditate on zero or vacuum or candle or you know so many uh, impersonal way of meditation uh, is there out in the market. So in impersonal meditation, one may just sit down and observe the thought and, and one may simply be hungry and uh, looking for dinner. I think it's dinner for. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's very challenging to keep the mind on track in, in impersonal way of meditation. Therefore, Sri Prabhupada has given us the process of uh, chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra on our chanting beads that uh, helps our mind to focus in mantra. So this is the, the process of devotional service. There are different activities one can do, one can serve the deities, one can do arti, one can offer food, one can go on Harinam. So all the activities one can do and uh, according to the Pancharadriki regulations given by our Acharyas, and happily they can go back to Godhead. There is a long list of difference between work and devotion and renunciation. Left side is renunciation, which is done by Mayavadi sannyasis. We will read that in purport. The right side is the comparison, what is done in devotion by Vaishnava sannyasis. In case of Mayavadi's process, it requires a prior purification Whereas the devotional service, the process of chanting itself is purifying process. 
in case of the renunciation or the the jnana process the mayavadi sannyasis use simply jnana which is not sufficient because the ultimately the ego is not purified there we said that the mind and senses are purified by jnana but ultimately ego is still there i want to become god i i want I, you know i don't want to serve god i want to become god that's the ego um so so in process of devotional service there is a service to krishna so there is no there is no fall down again we were discussing about incomplete renunciation is that you just give up you don't engage in krishna service whereas uh, in case of devotional service bhakti yoga we use everything in krishna service and we have found the root as prescribed by our spiritual master or we are hearing and chanting engaged in krishna service that is watering the root the renunciation process is simply renouncing but here we are attached to krishna and because simply there is a renounce there is a dryness you don't have activities to perform so you may get bored and definitely you get bored because ultimately what we are looking for is a fulfilling relationship and there is no such thing and then then you know sri prabhupada says in the purport that they fall down to the material platform and they just do some social welfare without connection to krishna so anything we just do for our own mind satisfaction it is sense gratification it may be social service but it still it is for my pleasure but when we are working for krishna's pleasure then we automatically get our own pleasure so it's a very tedious uh, it takes many many births whereas uh, the process of bhakti is quick verse 6 says acharyana adhigachati so quick in uh, process of bhakti yoga we study bhagavad gita and simad bhagavatam whereas the sankhya yoga they, they just study sankhya philosophy vedanta sutra hari shankara acharya in case of bhakti yoga we have a natural commentary on vedanta sutra by ved vyas himself so it is full of ultimate conclusion of the vedanta veda anta the conclusion of the vedas is is in shrimad bhagavatam so so that's how it is uh, process of devotion is better ultimately they may reach to same destination but it may take many many birth and there is a risk always there so we have to take the easy and uh, quick process shri bhagavata tells this is a elevator process one way is that you can take the steps and go up it may take many many births uh, you can take elevator quick you go back to your head just after this life time can stop share here so we'll read the text Hey. Anil Prabhu, please read everything. Uh, yeah, everything. Sanskrit, English, everything. Which which verse, Prabhu? Five point one. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's read just the the translation for first six verses. You can just read the translation for all six verses, Prabhu. Then I can ask other devotees to read. Okay, sure, Prabhu. Arjuna said. O oh, Krishna, first of all, you ask me to renounce work, and then and then again you recommend work with devotion. Now, will you kindly tell me definitely which of the two is more beneficial? Text two, the personality of God had replied, the renunciation of work and work in devotion are both good for liberation, but of the two, work in devotion service is better than renunciation of work. Text three. one who neither hates nor desires the fruits of his activities is known to be always renounced such a person free from all 
duality is easily overcomes material bondage and is completely liberated o mighty armed arjuna text 4 only the ignorant speak of devotional service as being different from the analytical study of the material world those who are actually don't say that he who applies himself well to one of these paths it should the results of both text 5 one who knows that the position reached by means of analytical study can also be attained by devotional service and who therefore sees analytical study and devotional service to be on same level sees things as they are text 6 merely renouncing all activities at not engaging the devotion service of lord cannot make one happy but a thoughtful person engaged in devotion service can achieve this supreme without delay thank you prabhu We'll read from verse three. Let's see. Rachi, can you read today? Uh, are you okay to read or? Ah uh, no, I cannot read. No. Okay, no problem. No problem. Let's see. Deepa, ma'am, are you? Yes, ma'am. Your voice is very low. Are you able to hear me now? Yes, yes, very nice. Yeah, yeah. you can you can read the Sanskrit if you can. Okay. Ah, uh, nyaay, gyaneya se nitya sannyasi yona dveshti na kanch kanchati ah uh, nir nirdvan devo hi mahabaho sukam bandat pramuchyate translation one who neither hates nor desires the fruits of his activities is known to be always renounced such a person free from all dualities easily overcomes material bondage and is completely liberated o mighty amd arjuna perpet i'm okay one who is fully in krishna consciousness is always a renouncer because he feels neither hatred nor desire for the results of his action such a renouncer dedicated to the transcendental loving service of the lord is fully qualified in knowledge because he knows his constitutional position in the his relationship with krishna he knows fully well that krishna is the whole and that he is part and parcel of krishna such knowledge is perfect because it is qualitatively and quantitatively correct the concept of oneness with krishna is incorrect because the part cannot be equal to the whole knowledge that one is one in quality yet different in quantity is correct transcendental knowledge leading one to become full in himself having nothing to aspire to or lament over there is no duality in his mind because whatever he does he does for krishna being thus freed from the platform of dualities he is liberated even in this material world mm, thank you yeah so who is always renounced somebody who knows everything belongs to krishna and such person does not hate or desire any result from something because it is krishna's work krishna's property so fully depend on krishna hmm. again sri prabhupad cuts the mayavadi philosophy that one can become god he is he is saying that realizing one's constitutional position is knowing one's relationship with krishna and relationship with krishna is that we are part and parcel of krishna we are servant of krishna we do not become krishna in quality we are same spiritually same like a gold mine and gold particle sri prabhupada gives example sun and sun sun molecules um, photons so same quality fire and spark spark has the same fire quality but it's a small and uh, it gets covered 
it can get extinguished. So, Satchit Ananda is the quality, eternal, with full of cognizance and full of bliss, full of Ananda. Same quality is there in Krishna and we also have that, but we are covered by lust as you learned from chapter 3. So, that lust can be uncovered by the transcendental knowledge. that we are Krishna's, everything belongs to Krishna. So as we discussed last time that, you know, if something does not belong to me, so what is the, the question of renouncing? So that person is always renounced, always renounced. Okay, nothing is mine. Just I am, I am a, uh, you know, servant Krishna. So the Prabhupada gives some examples sometime like a bank cashier, sorry, a bank cashier counts money, uh, he may count millions of dollars, but he understands that this does not belong to me. Like that, we may handle so many responsibilities on behalf of Krishna, knowing that the, the property or any, anything that we have, a power or anything we have, is not, is not ours, but it is for Krishna's service. So now who can read? Pravesh, can you read uh, Sanskrit and in English? All, all of this? Can you hear me? Yes. It's a little bit low your voice, but we can hear you. Shanti Yogi, Kritik Bala, Prabhupada, Pipanditaha. Ek Maya Sita Samya Gu Samya Gu Vayu Vidante Falam. Translation Only the ignorant speak of devotional service, Karma Yoga, as being different from the analytical study of the material world, Sankhya. Those who are actually learned say that he who applies himself well. To one of these paths achieves the result of both. Purpose. The aim of the analytical study of the material world is to find the soul of existence, the soul of the material world existence, or the super soul. <laughs> Devotional service to the Lord entails service to the super soul. One process is to find the root of the tree, the other is to water the root. The real student of Sankhya philosophy finds the root of the material world, Vishnu, and then in perfect knowledge engages himself in the service of the Lord. Therefore, in a sense, there is no difference between the two because the aim of both is Vishnu. Those who do not know the ultimate end say that the purposes of Sankhya and Karma Yoga are not the same. For one who is learned, learned, knows the unifying aim in these different processes. So what is the unifying aim? To meet, to um, find Vishnu. Yes, Vishnu. Yeah, both of them is trying to reach to Vishnu. Uh, one process is, uh, you know, as we discussed, it takes longer. Bhakti Yoga is already watering the root. So Vishnu is pleased quickly, elevator method. But Sankhya philosophy is searching, still searching. But ultimately the real student, that means the perfection, when you get perfection in Sankhya Yoga, ultimately one has to come in contact with devotee. By the process of Sankhya Yoga, it's a kind of purification process. And somebody is in a high, highly mode of goodness, by renunciation and all. If such person meets a pure devotee like Srila Prabhupada, then immediately it's like an example of dry wood and wet wood. We may be in like a wet wood condition and we are serving, trying to serve Krishna. A lot of smoke comes out when you, um, when you try to uh, put fire in the wet wood. It doesn't burn so fast, but the dry wood is a, like you have already rules and regulations in your life. You are your practiced austerity. So 
serving Krishna, you already understand that you are not this body in Sankhya process. So when you meet a devotee, then you can catch a fire. But if you are alone, just searching, searching, okay, and I can figure out, I can figure out that without taking shelter of disciple succession, it's, it's not going to help us. It may take many, many births. That's what we learn in chapter 7. So unifying aim is both to, to reach to Vishnu and uh, who is next to read uh, Aditya, can you? Verse 5. Yes, sir. Yat sankhe prapyate sthanam tadya girapi kamyate ekam sankhyam cha yogam cha yaha pasyati sa pasyati. Translation. One who knows that the position reached by means of analytical study can also be attained by devotional service. And who therefore sees analytical study and devotional service to be on the same level, sees things as they are. Purport. The real purpose of philosophical research is to find the ultimate goal of life. Since the ultimate goal of life is self-realization, there is no difference between the conclusions reached by two processes. By Sankhya philosophical research, one comes to the conclusion that a living entity is not a part and parcel of the material world, but of the supreme spirit whole. Consequently, the spirit soul has nothing to do with the material world. His actions must be in some relation with supreme. When he acts in Krishna consciousness, he is actually in his constitutional position. In the first process, Sankhya, one has to become detached from matter and in the devotional yoga process, one has to attach himself to the work of Krishna consciousness. Factually, both processes are same, although superficially one process appears to involve detachment and another process appears to involve attachment. Detachment from matter and attachment to Krishna are one and the same. One who can see this sees Sorry. One who can see these sees things as they are. Thank you. So uh, we gave the example of holding a rock and an X. So you to hold the X, you have to throw the rock like that. So you have to, to get attached to Krishna. One has to detach. Like right now we are doing that, right? We are reading Bhagavad Gita. So we are not reading any fiction novel, right? We are not watching any movie. <laughs> We are somewhat attached to Krishna for at least one hour, right? So that's why it is like when we are engaged in Krishna's service, uh, automatically the material detachment is there. You don't have to separately endeavor for just, you know, I don't watch movie, I don't, uh, you know, do anything and then just sit down. Well, that, that may be there. But here we are engaged in Krishna's service because we are learning Krishna's words. In Sankhya Yoga, they are just trying to analyze the situation. So, it's a more tedious process. Okay, the last verse for today. Who has not read? Uh, everybody read, right? Anil Prabhu, you just read the English uh, part. So, if you can read this verse, it will be so nice. Um, 5.6 so merely renouncing all activities not engaging in the devotion service of the Lord cannot make one happy but a thoughtful process engaged in devotion service can achieve the supreme without delay there are two classes of sannyasis or persons in the renounced order of life the mayavadi sannyasis are engaged in the study of sankhya philosophy Whereas the Vaishnava sannyasis are engaged in the study of Bhagavatam philosophy, which affords the proper comment, commentary on the Vedanta Sutras. The Mayavadi sannyasis also study the Vedanta Sutras but use their own commentary called <coughs> Sariraka Bhashya, written by Shankaracharya. The students of the Bhagavata school are engaged in the devotional service of the Lord, according to 
pan kartriki regulations and therefore the vaishnava sanyasas have multiple engagements in the transcendental service of the lord the vaishnava sanyasis have nothing to do with the material activities and yet they perform various activities in their devotional service to lord but the mayavadi sanyasis engaged in the studies of sankhya and vedanta and speculation cannot relate the transcendental service of the lord because their studies become very tedious they and they sometimes become become tired of brahman speculation and thus they take shelter of the bhagavatam without proper understanding consequently their study of shrimad bhagavatam becomes troublesome dry speculations and impersonal interpretations by artificial means are all useless for them mayavadi sanyasis the vaishnavi sanyasis who are engaged in devotional service are happy in the discharge of their transcendental duties they have guarantee of ultimate entrance into the kingdom of god the mayavadi sanyasis sometimes fall down from from the path of self realization and again enter into material activities of philanthropic and altruistic nature which are nothing but material engagements therefore the conclusion is that who are engaged in krishna conscious activities are better situated than the sanyasis engaged in simple speculation about what is brahman and what is not brahman although they too come to krishna consciousness after many births thank you so much prabhu so the process of devotional service is definitely superior because it leads to achieve the supreme without delay lord krishna says na chirena adigachati so who can share something what are the activities one has to do in this quick process of devotional service to achieve the the aim of life vishnu or krishna so listening to bhagavad gita lectures and chanting and eating uh, the food offered to god yes sir thank you so much yes very nice points bro others other comments other points not comments but other other points others items of service pravesh yes. or vidya book 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 distribution yes book distribution thank you prabhu let's see others uh, others sir yeah, yes sir like following spiritual masters instruction and then stick to them okay very good thank you okay pravesh you yeah, are reading the scripture so your voice is too low uh, i mean reading the scriptures reading the scripture what is scripture uh, bhagavad gita and bhagavatam bhagavatam okay have you seen a bhagavatam yeah i think the 16 volume that big set of books yeah yeah <coughs> the first volume is very powerful <coughs> it has everything bipamadai <coughs> okay. um so about bhagavatam you are asking sir uh, what are other items we can do uh, in the process of devotional service to krishna so um, i the uh, chanting hare rama hare krishna maha mantra and um, a karma you like to renounce it's basically work always work for krishna yeah thank you there is a very beautiful verse in shrimad bhagavatam <coughs> shared by prahlad maharaj everyone knows about uh, 
Lord Narsimha, right? <coughs> Let me drink some water. Anyone do not know who is Prahlad? Bhakt Prahlad? <clears throat> Everyone knows him. So he says, <clears throat> Bhakti Yoga, or devotional service means, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Ismaranam Padasevanam Archanam Vandanam Dasyam Sakyam Atma Nivedan. Nine, nine process. Naudha Bhakti. Hearing about Krishna, Kirtan is glorifying that we are chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra, chanting with our beads and uh, chanting with musical instruments. Vishnu Ishmaranam, uh, remembering Vishnu, Krishna, Krishna Yadi Vishnu. So if we hear and chant, then we will remember definitely. Remember his activities, remember his name. Excuse me, then Pada Sevanam. So, we are serving Krishna's lotus feet. So the devotees of Krishna, they are in the lotus feet. So we have to serve our Guru, the Pada Sevanam. Then Archanam, Archana, which is the, the worship of the deity, Krishna and the deity for Archavigraha form in temple or we can have a deity at home and serve. That's how you offer the food to Krishna, Krishna's deity form. So, Archana process, then Vandana is the, the prayer, suitable prayers we, we glorify Krishna. There are many, many Vandanas in, in Srimad Bhagavatam, the prayers of Bhishma Pitamaha, prayers of Queen Punti, prayers of Gayendra, is a Gayendra Moksha prayer, <clears throat> prayers by gopis, prayers by the, the wives of uh, Kaliya Nag, when Krishna was dancing on Kaliya, then they came up and glorified Krishna. The prayers of The wives of Brahmins. So many, many uh, prayers are there in Srimad Bhagavatam that, uh, that we can recite. Vandana. Dasyam Sakyam Atma Nivedanam, those are like a higher level, like one act like a servant. So basically, you do the, the work. Srila Prabhupada directly involves us in Dasyam. I mean, we do all of this, but also we are in the mood of Dasa. So we get initiated and we get last name Das. So we become <coughs> Krishna servant. Sakyam Atmani Vedam. <coughs> Those are higher levels. One can serve Krishna's friend and uh, one can fully surrender to Krishna like uh, Bali Maharaj. He offered everything to Lord Vaman. Atmani Vedan. <clears throat> Who is example of friend to Krishna? Arjun. Arjun, very nice. We are reading Bhagavad Gita. Arjun is friend to Krishna. And Das, Hanuman. Hanuman is servant. And uh, in, in Krishna's pastime, Krishna's chariot driver is Daruka. His name is Daruka. So Krishna's servant. So we can do these activities. We can uh, definitely offer whatever we have uh, in our in our position, our property, our intelligence, our skills. Um, we can, Srila Prabhupada says the process of dovetail, like we discussed sometime dovetail, it's like matching two things, like puzzle pieces, like you, you crossboard puzzle, you have like, you match each other, 
that joint form. So you have like, I want to eat and I have to serve Krishna. So I offer food to Krishna and then I accept the prasadam like that. <laughs> This is the thing, like we have certain tendencies, we want to do that, and so we can match with how, how I can serve Krishna. You know, I have a tendency to sing, so I can sing for Krishna. I like to paint, so I can paint very nice painting for Krishna. I like to decorate something, so I can decorate the temple. Like that, we can have a, I'm a software engineer, I can design website for temple or for, you know, like, Somebody have done this online, Bhagavad Gita, so much work they have done. We have everything in this, in this Veda based website. So they have served Krishna, they are serving Krishna like this, maintaining this website. So whatever skill we have, we can use that in Krishna's service under the guidance of spiritual master. <clears throat> so this is very, very nice. Who can share something who have uh, recently felt something, some happiness by, by engaging in Krishna's, in Krishna's service? Recently we had many festivals, any, any, anybody attended any festival? Like Gordhan Puja or, or Damodar, this is month of Damodar, singing Damodar Ashtakam or offering lamb to Krishna. Is there anything like Diwali, anything serving Krishna, anything one would like to share? Right. Aditya Prabhu, what did you do on Gordhan Puja, Diwali? Um, sir, on the day of Diwali, Diwali itself, like we celebrated Gordhan Puja. But, yes. Uh, what did you do and how did you do and what happened to you? Uh, well, sir, I was at my advisor's home. He invited me on that day only. So, uh, when I came back, like uh, they already celebrated and no one was here in the temple. So, oh, okay. so you but, but, yes, sir. But uh, uh, like the next day, like they, they were celebrating Damodarastakam even today at 7.15 p.m. So they, we just offer lamp and do chanting. Okay. So they do only on Sundays? Damodaras come, no sir, every day like they are doing after Diwali. Just offer lamps and we are three, four people and then... Sing yes, Damodaras come. Yes, sir. So how do, what do you feel about it? What is your feeling <laughs> by joining there? Um, uh, th those are uh, slokas, sir, I think. Of... No, I'm not saying what is that. I'm saying what is your feeling? Your feeling, how do you feel? participating in that well sir i feel uh, i feel really peaceful here and like the, the offering lamps I, I couldn't do in my uh, room here because you know that fire hazard or something like that but in temple i can do that so so it's a lot more easier i feel connected sir okay yes okay Okay, so you want to do that connection in future? Uh, yes, sir. That's why, sir, I'm staying here. Like, yeah. it's a... Very nice. Thank you for sharing. And, sir, like, uh, when, you, when you live, like, in connection with devotees, so you understand things, you, uh, like, my knowledge for Krishna and Krishna devotees, it increases every day exponentially. Hmm. Yes, sir. That's the importance of 
being in DOD association. Yes, sir. Thank you for sharing. Hare Krishna. Thank you, sir. Deepa Mataji, did you do something on the Wali Gordon Puja nearby your community? Uh, no, sir. Actually, I just prayed, uh, put lamps, and um, I I get some information from Facebook and all through internet only. So, uh, Ashtakam, I listened. So, in my small capacity, whatever listening I am doing, not I am not involved in any service activity yet. Yeah, listening is service <laughs> as long as we are, uh, you know, whatever the situation is, accordingly, we have to dovetail the situation. So, uh, uh, service, you know, again, uh, at home also, if you are offering your food to Krishna, that means the cooking becomes your service because you're offering to Krishna. But if we don't offer the food to Krishna, then there is not service. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Your children participating? In the uh, no, I asked. No, I asked them. Like, I don't want to force them because the more I'm forcing, they are going away. So I'm thinking, let them take their time. So I'll do my part. Very good, very good. Actually, uh, did you connect with Lal Gopal Prabhu or no? And I, before, like that, I asked my kids, but they were like, no, like. Um, I mean, I what I've seen, the more I'm trying to mm. tell them they are going away more and more. Mm. So um, that's the challenge I'm facing. So basically, I'm doing by myself and I'm praying. That yeah, yeah. Actually, there is a like parenting coach um, mm. in Chicago, a devotee. Uh, so he, he is really very helpful. Uh, mm. So if you want to connect, you know, I mean, Definitely, you will get a support. Um, yeah. You will not feel like you're alone, like, you know, struggling. Yeah. yeah. Nice. How about you, Anil Prabhu? How, is, how was your celebration? So, Diwali, like, uh, we just, uh, uh, we just uh, celebrated with the lambs in the, by, uh, in, in the house in, before the deities. Okay. Did you visit uh, any, uh, you know, temple, the ISKCON center or something? I mean, like a long time ago, like uh, uh, I used to come to St. Louis and uh, and during the time I I visited there. But now here in Des Moines, like I don't have any temples, but I'm regularly listening to the lectures, lectures of uh, Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very nice, Prabhu. You have small children? Yes, I have children, Prabhu. How old are they? Like uh, 10 and 6. Oh, okay. Very nice. Yeah. And here also, like, uh, when Prabhuji, like, on Saturdays, like, in Des Moines also, he, uh, he's telling uh, Bhagavad Gita lectures over the Skype, who is located oh. in, in our city, yeah. Okay. They're for children? So, uh, no, I mean, like, my elder one isn't, but my younger one is not, uh, still not there. And, uh, so, I mean, he not, not, I mean, he's telling for many, I mean, like uh, many people, I mean, he's telling through Skype. So, okay. I mean, he, even before this pandemic also, he used to tell at his house, but um, right now he's, because of pandemic, he's uh, teaching, he's uh, teaching lessons over the Skype. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I know Pravesh and me, we were together in a temple here in Carbondale. And uh, they served all the Annakuta thing. They, they offered the Gujarati families, they offered all the food to Krishna and Lakshmi. And there was a feast here. I couldn't do much, but yeah, that's what we, we participated here in Hindu temple in Carbon Bell. <laughs> How was your experience there, Pravesh? In Mandir. Yeah. This time. It was all right, but uh, uh, it was fine. I mean, party and everything was nice, but I've had better experience here before. Uh, like the food was really. I too spicy this time. 
and Prachi would probably also agree. Um, we were talking about this earlier, and just precisely. Uh, it was like barbecue sauce on top, and I, I really did like that. Okay. All right. We are in the last week of Kartik month. So, anybody inspired to serve Krishna remotely, that means you can chant at home more. We can chant together. Together means with your family. And as much as we can chant and we can read Bhagavad Gita, we can do wherever we are. And uh, thank you so much for being here every Sunday. I really appreciate your association. Without you, this this will not be uh, here. I, I won't be able to do anything. So I appreciate your participation. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. We'll meet next week. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, sir. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.